no link between diabetes and diet. It's not a myth. Gentlemen, back me up here. Things we once believed to be true might not still hold true today, so we're here to debunk some food myths we used to swear by. Here are 10 wrong food facts people used to believe. We're going on a splash of cold hard truth in Tina's face field trip. Raw eggs were the culprit for everything. Now, Meg, in order to get you into fighting shape, I want you to drink this glass of raw eggs. It was long believed that egg yolks caused high cholesterol, so egg white became the new breakfast favorite, while the creamy yellow part was tossed down the drain. But luckily for the eggs, more recent studies have shown that while, yes, egg yolks can raise cholesterol, it's nothing compared to some other cholesterol-containing foods which contain trans fats and saturated fats. Egg yolks do not negatively impact the blood cholesterol of a healthy person and can be consumed safely. Not guilty. Plus, all those links to heart diseases have been associated with foods people typically eat with eggs, such as bacon and sausage, which are way more harmful than a little egg yolk. Raw eggs were also believed to be the reason why indulging in uncooked cookie dough wasn't safe, but it was also proven wrong. It turns out flour is the real culprit. New research has shown that E. coli can survive in a dry environment like in your flour bag, making eggs the least of your problems. They're looking for us in the wrong place. Negative calorie foods existed. If you believe it to be real, then it's real. Many people still believe that negative calorie foods are a thing. You know, the idea that you can eat an unlimited amount of certain foods because you're actually burning more calories eating them than they contain? It sounds more like a dieter's dream than an actual fact. But nevertheless, if munching on celery all day long is what people need to be happy, who are we to burst their bubble? Obviously, most of these so-called negative calorie foods are very nutritious and can help you burn fat over time. But there is no data to prove that they require more energy to eat, digest, and process than they actually provide. I just hear rumors. Perhaps it's not true. No, no, no. I, I, I believe you. The idea that eating high-fiber, low-calorie foods like celery, lettuce, grapefruit, and cucumbers takes more energy to digest has been promoted in all kinds of forums, blogs, and even books, which has contributed significantly to the mass misinformation. So while, sadly, negative calorie foods don't exist, all hope is not lost. There are still plenty of nutrient-rich and low-calorie foods for that daily snack time, including kale, blueberries, raspberries, and spinach. Because of their high water content, you'll be able to eat lots without consuming too many calories. I thought this seemed like a good alternative. Necessary poultry washing. Something my mom always says. Many people would come home, take their chicken out of the packaging, and rinse it under the kitchen faucet because that's what they were told to do. Heck, even Julia Child was doing it. It became such a common practice in many households, and a study from Drexel University found that approximately 90% of Americans used to wash their poultry. They believed that rinsing chicken could make your chicken safer to eat by getting rid of pathogenic bacteria such as Campylobacter and Salmonella. The truth is, by doing so, instead of killing the bacteria, you might actually be spreading it around your kitchen. I only wanted to help, but now things are out of control. Splashing a contaminated chicken under a tap can easily and quickly spread the bacteria onto your hands, your counters, dishes, and even your clothes. And since only a few Campylobacter cells are needed to cause food poisoning, your chances of getting it increase. The best way to get rid of that bacteria? Just cook your chicken. The cooking process will destroy any bacteria, provided you cook your chicken as directed. That way, you don't have cross-contamination all over your kitchen, and you'll eliminate a very useless step in the process. This is a win-win situation. Sawing meat on the counter was fine. What? Who even does that anymore? Another major no-no people used to believe back in the day was the harmlessness of defrosting your meat right there on the counter. While it might still be tempting to do, especially if you're in a rush and forgot to take it out of the freezer the day before, you should never succumb to the temptation. By letting your food thaw on the counter, you're practically inviting bacteria to grow and drastically increasing your chance of getting food poisoning. Just because it was standard practice before does not mean that it should be part of your routine now. Just like with raw eggs, meat cannot be left out at room temperature for too long, otherwise it becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. Germs! Germs! Everywhere! Ah! 
Another thing to avoid, defrosting the meat in the microwave. Why? Because since it doesn't heat evenly, certain parts of the meat might start to cook, which would later lead to overcooking the meat. If you really want to speed up the process, submerge your meat in a bowl of cold water while making sure it's wrapped in leak-proof plastic. It's very important for the water to be cold and not hot, or else you'll find yourself with the same issue as with the microwave. Leaving your meat out on the counter or trying to speed up the process might be enticing, but at the end of the day, you're better off waiting for it to saw at its own speed in the fridge if you want to avoid getting sick. What? Relax, Terry, chill out, get your undies out of your buns. Carrots improve your eyesight. They've ruined my childhood. Your childhood is currently happening. Everyone has heard at some point in their life that eating carrots can improve your eyesight and even help you see in the dark. While, yes, carrots are good for your eyes, it's only to a certain degree. Studies have shown foods high in zeaxanthin and lutein, like carrots, are good for lowering cholesterol levels as the body utilizes them to produce vitamin A. It's also been proven that these two compounds can lower the chance of suffering from degeneration of your retinas as you age. Even even though these are technically true, it's the origin story that poses a problem. Okay. Talk to me. I'm listening. It's believed to have started during World War II by Britain's Ministry of Information. RAF pilots apparently had incredible mission success at night. And instead of admitting they were using a new technology called radar, they lied and said it was because pilots were given a lot of carrots to eat and it was improving their night vision. This lie had quite the impact, not only on food rationing at the time, but also on our modern diet. So yes, carrots can improve the health of your eyes, but they won't improve your eyesight, reverse damage, or help you see in the dark. You are listing my broken dreams. Microwaving caused a loss of nutrients. Here's another truth that's gonna be hard to swallow. There was a time when people were convinced the microwave was the devil. It was basically the cause of everything that ailed society. Cancer, health problems, and your food lacking nutrients. However, most of these have been proven to be false, especially the lack of nutrients part. While it's true that heating up your food in the microwave as opposed to using the oven might not be the best way to keep all the flavor, it's one of the best ways to retain all of the vitamins. Indeed, there's nothing about microwaves that damages food more than any other cooking method. Instead, it helps to preserve all of the nutrients thanks to its quick heating. What a twist. For example, if you boil your vegetables, vitamins will usually disperse into the cooking water. And in ovens, your food is exposed to higher temperatures for a much longer time, which isn't ideal for keeping it rich in nutrients. Microwaves, on the other hand, heat your food much more efficiently and quickly. The less time it takes to cook, the less time the vitamins have to break down. Microwaving your food actually retains about the same nutrient levels as steamed food. So don't worry so much about popping your food in the microwave. It's much safer than we've been led to believe. Nobody ever believes anything I say. Pork needs to be well cooked. Oh, not at all. Yes, another food fact involving meat, because apparently people used to have the wrong impression. However, this one isn't all their fault, as it was a recommendation by the USDA for the longest time. A lot of people were taught to cook pork until it was well done, or until it reached the 160 degree safe cooking temperature. That usually resulted in a piece of dry and tasteless pork, which made for an unfavorable eating experience. Back in the day, there was this parasite called Trichinella spiralis, which can cause Cause trichinosis in humans, an infection caused by roundworm, and it was very common in pork. That was a long time ago. So to avoid getting infected, the meat needed to be cooked thoroughly, resulting in a rock-hard piece of pork. But thanks to the decline of the parasite's presence, the USDA was able to revise its cooking guidelines for pork and other whole muscle meats. This is why we can now enjoy tender, moist pork cooked to 145 degrees. The only thing is, you still need to let it rest for three minutes before eating as it allows for additional temperature rise and time for any bacteria to be destroyed. If you've ever had overcooked pork, you know how much those 15 degrees can make a difference. It may not sound like a lot, but it is. Mayo could sit out all day. Listen. I'm getting pretty tired. 
Picture this, it's a hot sunny day, you just made your famous potato salad and chicken sandwiches for everyone and packed it all in a lunch bag. Lunchtime rolls around and everybody has a feast without a care in the world. That scenario could have been very common back in the day, but that was before people started realizing the dangers of leaving anything with mayonnaise out for too long. That's because if mayonnaise, which contains raw eggs, is left out for over two hours at a temperature of 90 degrees or more, it's considered to be in the danger zone. This is not a drill. Please, Raw eggs can harbor salmonella bacteria, a potential source of severe food poisoning. There was a time when making your own mayonnaise was really in, and raw eggs were the star of the show. Not everyone knew of the danger zone, and some became sick from their homemade lukewarm mayo. This is a good rule to follow, even with commercial mayonnaise. However, commercial mayonnaise is usually a little safer to eat as it contains pasteurized eggs, vinegar, and lemon juice, more likely to kill foodborne illnesses. While it poses less of a risk, it is still pretty important to refrigerate anything with mayonnaise. Rules are rules, guys. Rules are rules. Raw milk was good. You're not good for me. It's not healthy. Raw milk is basically milk from any animal that hasn't been pasteurized to kill harmful bacteria, such as salmonella, E. coli, and listeria, among others, that cause foodborne illness. These dangerous bacteria can seriously injure anyone's health, especially people with weakened immune systems, children, elders, and pregnant people. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there were 127 outbreaks linked to raw milk or raw milk products like ice cream, soft cheese, or yogurt from 1990 through 2012, which resulted in 1,909 illnesses and 144 hospitalizations. Wow. Well, you've certainly given me a lot to think about. Since raw milk poses such a threat to public health, the federal government banned the sale of raw milk in most states. But some people still insist on consuming the stuff. They say they like to buy raw milk because it doesn't contain the growth hormone RBGH, they enjoy the taste, and like having a direct connection to what they're drinking. But sadly, all of those potential benefits from raw milk are outweighed by the risk. Along with any good bacteria you might get, you may also get the nefarious as well. To avoid getting sick, make sure you choose your milk and milk products very carefully. Worth it. Totally worth it. Organic means pesticide-free. Oh, it's hard to see the ugly truth. When you go to the grocery store to buy produce, you have two choices, the regular kind or organic. People who choose to get organic produce usually claim that it's because it's better for the environment and tastes better since it's so much more natural without all the chemicals. But contrary to popular belief, organic does not mean that it's free of pesticides or chemicals. It's a big misconception that a lot of people still believe to be true today, and we're here to set the record straight. You see, organic foods are organic if they're produced while protecting resources, conserving biodiversity, and have the approval of the Agriculture Marketing Service. It's more disarming than it sounds. But that doesn't stop farmers from using pesticides to protect their crops. In fact, chances are it's been sprayed multiple times by more than one pesticide. The USDA reports that pesticide residues are found both on organic and conventional crops alike, and no exception. Sure, most organic farmers will use natural pesticides from the USDA-approved substances list, like copper sulfate and hydrogen peroxide, but nonetheless, they are there. Pesticides are meant to kill pests and protect the crop, meaning they're necessary for a successful harvest. Well, it's a little more complex than that. Looking for more? Just tap or click another video. First time here? Then hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell.